In the previous couple of videos, I reminded you about the Cartesian plane, R2, and I talked about the shape defined by equations, which I called loci. I gave descriptions for the equations for lines and for conics, circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. When there are two or more loci considered at one point in time, a natural question is to ask where they meet each other, where they intersect. The diagram here shows two lines and gives their equations. The point 2, 3 is the intersection point of the two lines. In this video, I want to show you how to calculate intersections of loci. Intersection shows the multiple power of analytic geometry. The Cartesian plane is a connection between algebra and geometry, between equations and the shapes called loci. The major reason this connection is so important to mathematics is that it lets us use the algebra to solve geometry problems and, likewise, use geometry to visualize and understand algebra problems. It lets us go back and forth between algebra and geometry. Intersection is a geometry problem. Where do the two lines meet? By way of analytic geometry, this is now an algebra problem. In the diagram, the two lines have equations. The intersection point is the point that satisfies both equations. You can check this if you want. Put x equals 2 and y equals 3 in the first equation, and the left will evaluate to 0. But x equals 2 and y equals 3 in the second equation, and again the left will evaluate to 0. This is the key idea. The intersection point satisfies both equations. Therefore, to find the intersection point, I need to solve both equations. This is called solving a system of equations. I'm going to do two examples in this video to show the technique, starting with these two lines. There are several approaches to solving systems of equations. You may be familiar with one or more from your high school mathematics. The technique I prefer to use and teach is to isolate and replace. I want to isolate one variable and then use that to replace the isolated variable in the other equation. In this case, the variable y is isolated in both equations already. It's alone on one side. So I can use the first to replace y in the second with x plus 1. This produces an equation with only one variable, which is good, since now I can solve for that variable. I solve here by subtracting 3x from both sides, and by subtracting 1 from both sides as well. This results in the variable by itself on one side. Then I divide by negative 2, and I have the result that x equals 2. Then I put this back in the first equation to calculate y, which turns out to be 3, and that's how I find the point 2, 3, which is the intersection of the two lines. Again, the algebra, solving the system, isolate and replace, solves the geometry, finding the intersection. Now I'll do another example, this time with a line and a conic. Here's the ellipse x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1 equals 1, and the line y equals negative x. Visually, it looks like there should be two intersection points. I will use algebra to calculate the coordinates of these two points. Here are the two equations. In the second, the variable y is already isolated, so I can replace y with negative x in the first equation. Doing so produces this equation, since the square of negative x is the same as the square of x. Then I can add to the left side to get 5x squared over 4, from this point, I solve by multiplying by 4, dividing by 5, and then taking the square root. That produces two values for x, both the negative and the positive square root. Now that I know the values for x, I can use the original equation of the line, y equals negative x, to find the matching values for y. Each x value leads to a y value this way, one of opposite sign, and in this way I have calculated the two intersection points.